Well, you asked for it, so you're getting it. This is another buy a car online site on scene. I think it's in Iowa, but it turns out it's in Illinois, which apparently is a huge difference. Spend all day driving there to find out the car hasn't been plated since 1979 and hasn't ran in many, many years. And I have two days to fix it and drive 500 miles home. Great, grand. This is gonna be really fun. What we've got here is a 1969 Chevrolet Chevelle two-door. Surprised, right? Not a four-door. Give you a little tour, and then I've got to start thrashing on this thing. Interior is in pretty good shape, although it smells like moldy carpet and Taco John's. It does have quite a bit of weight reduction in the rear. Uh, it needs quarters on both sides. This side's maybe not as weight reduced. Um, guys, really nice, and he's throwing in these fenders. Those are swap meet fenders, 50 bucks he said he got those for. Windshield's in it. Don't have to do the old cellophane wrap supreme, so that's nice. Let me see if I can find the keys and we'll get in the trunk here. My optimism level just went really high. It's pretty rare I have keys to anything I own. Oh boy, that's a really, really good sign. Uh, oh, actually, even trade, I get the hubcaps. Hair cleaner, which most likely means carbs uncovered. Great. Oh, speed hole. Um, probably the distributor for it. Oh boy, we might have our hands full when I open the hood here. Oh, look at that. She might even be factory red. Let's uh, take a look under the hood. Illinois, 1979. Another good sign. Oh my. Yeah, hmm. Oh, man. Current situation. We've got a vegetable oil or pesticide fuel tank. Um, that kind of worries me a little bit, although it's not locked up. It does have a distributor, that's good news. Water pump's not tore off. Looks complete-ish. Um, no water. So overall, quite a bit of good news. I can work from this. After looking her over, I think I kind of got a list in my head here. First thing is we'll roll her over, see if it even uh, turns or if it's stuck. If it's not stuck, we'll pull the plugs out Take a look at the plugs, see what they look like. And while the sparkulators are out of it, we mozzle test the compression, see if the motor's hurt or if we have any chance at all of making it one of those 500 miles. And then from there, uh, we'll probably juice her up with a battery, see if we can get it cranking. And if it fires, we'll figure out the fuel issue. Then we'll move to transmission. And I think I'm gonna start interwebbing uh, some wheels, because I really don't think that flat donut from the 80s is going to make it home. And uh, yeah, we have like eight hours today, so super. I don't know how many times I got to tell you guys, but any project starts with a battery on the charger. And my uh, good Walmart unit here, the old negative post finally gave up the ghost, but best tool in the world came to the rescue. We're talking about a GM here, so if I can get this thing to roll over, I'm about 86.7% confident she'll fire. 
So let's uh, dig in here on the old crank bolt. Oh man. I'm, I'm getting there. Just settle down. There she is. <sighs> Please, baby Jesus. Oh, turns like butter. All right. We've got positive turnage, which is fantastic. But I did hear the valve train in there just snapping away, which uh, is a quick way to know that the engine's been sitting a very long, 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 long time. Step 37B, subsection A, is uh, pretty straightforward. You guys have been here a bajillion times. We're gonna pull the plugs out. Just try to get a read on them, get our eyeballs on those things. Uh, I could tell a guy a lot if you know how to read plugs. And then we'll, I um, can't believe I'm saying this twice today. We're gonna test on the old compression, which is something I usually never do, but. Well, I got all the lightning shooters out. Good news is they're all firing. But the bad news is I have really heavy deposits on three and five and two and six. Uh, so she's probably gonna smoke like a chimney. Um, could be lifter, could be rings. We'll play around with it a little bit more maybe if we get it fired and see. And then i get you in here again and see this. Might have to clean some of this stuff out so we don't start one of them one of their fires. And don't smell too good when that stuff starts cooking either. And then the house silicone on the old water neck is a nice treat. Uh, looks factory. Of course, if you're hitting the old peak optimizationals, you want to do a uh, compression test when the motor's hot and what have you. Obviously, that's not going to happen in this case. And since it hasn't ran in 58 million years, we're going to technically be doing a wet compression test because I'm going to throw some uh, Marvel mist oil down the old throats. So we have some upper cylinder lubrication just in case it runs. And for you kids at home, don't forget to jam the old carburetor open so she gets the proper amount of air. Uh, see that a lot on the interwebs. And as far as uh, actual compression, I don't really give a, you know what, if it's only 90. As long as they're all within 10 to 15% of each other, I don't care. If it makes fire and noise comes out of the tailpipe, ready to rock. You know, the trick here is just to try to get her shot way up in the back. You know, since the cylinders are tilted, it's all gonna run out the sparkulator hole. So, you wanna get it up top so she runs back down, if that's making any sense to you guys. And I like to give her just whatever, anywhere between two and 74 pumps of the old oil can here. Whatever you're feeling, unless it's a Wednesday, you wanna go with three. The only reason I brought this battery is she's got a go handle on her. But you know what I should have done is probably tested it to make sure it was a good battery. And then I brought a uh, extra battery post clamp with and I'm glad it did because I'll be dipped if she ain't missing one. So you just ease the new clamp on here. Even after two new battery clamps, I ain't getting any juice, so I gotta get out one of these wizard machines, figure out what's going on. I'm gonna be here all month if we got digitals going down on this. Trip hazard. These are really nice machines for dummies like me. Hook them on the ground and the old light bulb comes on, you got juice. And uh, what I like to do is just come down here to the fuse panel. And if I don't got electricity on one side of the fuse, I know I got an issue at the starter because the power comes from the battery down to the starter, from the starter up to the fuse block. Let's see what we got. Got no light bulbs. Oh. Kneeling on rocks is probably one of my most favorite pastimes. 
Boy, nothing makes me feel more alive like sketchy jack stand work. Kids don't do that. But just enough to get reset and then get them under the frame so I can get my belly under there. Well, I used up every foot pounds of diagrammical engineering experience I have. And that's leading me to believe that the ignition solenoid's bad. So I'm gonna snip this one out quick, Uber down to Napa down the road here, get that while I'm there, I'll blow some money on some other junk. Uh, might actually buy a new battery cable. Write that down, it's never happened before. And then we'll see where we're at. And it's already two o'clock and I've got nothing done. All right, if I did my digital geometries right, I think the starter solenoid was bad. So a new starter, negative cable, positive cable, both of which are way too short and the battery's hanging out incorrectly. Yeah. Uh, did confirm there is a neutral safety switch and I checked that it was working. So if all goes well, we're gonna get a crank here. It's cranking. Um, definitely probably needs uh, these things, but eh. All right, let's quick get on the compression test and throw some plugs in it, see if we can get this thing firing. I'm losing light fast, so. Had to go find a throttle opener 200. Something like that. Got my whew, hooked up and uh, crank on it a couple times. One fifty. Plenty. So the number five cylinder was a little bit low, and that kind of correlates with the spark plug. If I'm reading them right, this one should have plenty of compression. Yeah, that one was almost one eighty. Well, I went ahead and finished the compression testing. And uh, we definitely got a sick motor. We've got variants from 140 all the way to 180, which is a little too extreme. I mean, it's gonna run, but we definitely have some rings or valve train issue. And I've got it scribed into my fender here so I don't forget which one's which cylinder, but it did correlate with the uh, spark plug. So this is gonna get really interesting. 500 friggin' miles. I'm such an idiot. Well, it's time to throw some sparkulators in this thing yeah, and see if it can fire. I had a guy on the face space page ask me uh, if I gap my spark plugs after watching that Dodge video. Of course I do, I just kind of gapped. You know, then you go on to the next and just gapped. No, but in all reality, Chevy small blocks uh, like it at about 35, but every single engine's different. Depends on your compression ratio and your cam lift and duration and all the other diagrammical stuff. I'd be real curious how many of you guys know more than one firing order off the top of your head, other than the old 18436572. Put it down in the comments box down there. While you're clicking around, navigating and what have you, might as well go ahead and click the old subscribe button for me. I'd surely appreciate that. Torqued. A guy went ahead and installed the I'm a Lone Wolf 600 trigger. These are really handy. Uh, if you don't have one, get one. <sighs> we need some fire maker. When I know I'm most likely gonna be cranking on something for 50 days, uh, I add a little two cycle oil <laughs> into my gasoline, or just run your chainsaw mix, whatever works for you. But this'll uh, give you some lubrication on the old top end while you're getting the motor sorted out. Well, I'm kind of thinking I typically have a pre-started up checklist, but drawing a blank. So I'm gonna throw some of this down the throat and uh, at least see if we can get it to fire. And then I'll try to figure out 
the more important stuff. Key on, I know I need that. Mission wire, gotta have battery to the distributor. We're in business. Tons of smoke. That's the Marvel Mystery Oil, or a bad motor, or both. Either way, she makes fire. Yes. Fuel tank on this was bypassed, which probably means it's rusted out, full of junk, or leaking, or all of the above. But I can't run it on a boat tank 500 miles. Well, I mean, guy probably could. Well, we're gonna test on it. So I'm gonna put this filter before the fuel pump in hopes that I can get 17 miles out of it. And then we'll be able to see what's coming up from the tank as well. I'm gonna have to do a loop like that. She's getting nipply out here. There's some of the gas that she was running and unfortunately we probably just filled the gas pump with that, but there's my new We're gonna give that a shot instead. Help me, that came off now. Usually you gotta fight on these filters. This sucker wants out. That's actually a good sign. It built pressure if it's billowing out of the top. And there's zero viscosity left in that. I could wet sand paint with that pretty easy. Don't get the right wrenches, just get a crescent wrench. It'll do about anything. They'll even hammer for you if you want. I'm still in shock. This motor, after who knows how many years since its last start, fired right up. It's probably why I'm a diehard GM Buick fan. Not to say I don't like Fords or Mopar stuff, but it's just, they never quit. Wow, this just got really interesting. Sun's about to go down and was gonna bottle feed it some more, get the oil pressure built back up after the oil change, and I'll be dipped if the old starter didn't just quit on me. So I'm pulling this one out again, and gonna run down to AutoZone and grab another one, I guess, and hope that that one lasts more than 10 tries. Great, grand. What can I tell you about Illinois? Part stores are a million miles away. It's cold. <laughs> Someone's burning grass and bush at 11 o'clock at night. And I keep hearing a circular saw. So you guys know how to party. Second starter's in. Uh, I think the plan is just to bottle feed on it for a while and see if we can get it to pull fuel from the tank. I've got 3.27 gallons in there. Probably not enough, but I want to get it running anyway, bottle feeding. So let's go ahead and work on that and see what we get. Starter needs shim. Again. Hmm. I'm going to try to fill the bowl again. Well, the fan clutch is definitely shot. Sounds pretty decent. I don't hear one or 16 lifters sticking, so that's pretty good. But I need my carburetor adjusting tool. Here it is. And we're just gonna just tap her on in there. 
just tap her around. That was pretty good. Whew. Yeah, runs like a champ. Well, now that she's running somewhat, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get some gauges on her so I can keep track of the vittles. So I'll get a temp gauge on her and at least an oil pressure gauge. That'll make the guy feel a little bit better. Well, now I've really got a problem. Went ahead and torqued that off. And um, now all the coolant's running out of the side of the motor. I'm sure that's going to pull up right where I don't need it to when I replace the starter for a third time tomorrow. Great. Well, the guy's starting to run out of steam. And it's really late and cold. I think I'm going to put the wheels on it. That'll give me some motivation. And now I have to go to a hardware store to get some easy outs. That brass fitting I've broken off in the head. I've never done that and I've put 58 million pairs of gauges in but of course it's this weekend right and I don't know I think that's probably going to be it for tonight we'll have to hit it early as we can tomorrow morning. Got some old school Kragers we're going to go with 215 up front and then of course the rear We're gonna go with 255. They need cleaned up a little bit, but I think they're gonna look really awesome on this car. So I'm gonna throw these on super quick. This will be really good for the neighbors. Boys, I should learn my lesson and look at that wheel bearing. Get your dust cap opener. Well, this seems to be a common thing for me in Chevelles for whatever reason. You ever have days when you just wonder why it is you're doing what you're doing? This has got a broken stud on it, but we're gonna let that ride. Oh, I can't see nothing. Ooh, that ain't good. Guy didn't check the old uh, thing called backspacing. Well, that's pretty much it for me tonight. I am exhausted. Man, I need a dump beverages. Car looks awesome with the wheels on it. Boom, they're tight. They're gonna work. So, I'm gonna go eat some tacos. Uh, sleep for about three, maybe four hours. I'll be back in the morning. Well, I've already dug in this morning with a lot of little things, stuff that you guys probably wouldn't want to see anyway, like um, using easy out on the broken brass fitting. Got the uh, broken piece out, new temp sender in. Uh, took out the old dummy oil pressure switch, put in a new brass one on a plastic line. Hate the plastic lines, but they didn't have any brass, so it is what it is. Blew off all the junk off the motor. Uh, repaired the gas gauge sending line, which is probably a moot point because I think the fuel line stuck. So we're probably gonna end up running the old boat tank. See how that goes. And right now I'm gonna put a tachometer in it so we know how many digicals she's spinning. Have no idea what the rear end gear is on this thing. Um, probably run it at 2,500 just to be safe, so. If it's a motor I built, I run them at 3,500 all day, but I'm in uncharted territory here. I always mount my tacks with zip ties, but apparently these here uh, hose clamps just, uh, and you can mount them like this, says the interwebs. So I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna put it right here in my teeth. So guy, when he's driving with one eye falling asleep, can always keep an eye on his engine digicals. Okay. Oh. I got it. I got it. 
All right, I think I'm back to a point again this morning where I'm gonna see if she'll fire off. I'd really like to try to get it to just sit and idle. And then I could start testing things like the uh, alternator, see if she's putting a charge out. And then I also want all the seals and gaskets and everything to get nice and hot and see what kind of leaks we come up with. And also I'd really like to see fuel pulling from the gas tank which would be spectacular and I could try to avoid death trap 600 by putting a boat tank in the passenger seat with me. So, let's see what happens. Nothing. That is quite different from yesterday, so I'm gonna make sure I still have power to the distributor if I can find my magical jab stick. Well, it's been sitting here idling for about five minutes. You can see she smokes like a chimney. I'm really watching the temperature close. I'm thinking the thermostat's definitely going to be froze. But I really don't want to take that apart because one of the bolts holding the thermostat housing gasket on is about to break off, or felt like. So I'm going to keep wrapping on this water neck here and try to loosen up that thermostat. You'll notice when I tapped on the carb and immediately idled down. Definitely think the needle's gummed up in there. It says it's at 190, but typically when you don't have water moving like this, it's probably even hotter than that. I'll put my hand on the front of the head here. Uh, we'll be okay for a little while still. It must be charging. I haven't put the meter on it yet, but if it's been running this long, still no water. I might have to shut it down. Getting in the danger zone. It's got oil pressure. Where it's sitting. Got another mosquito car. I like to keep them down, drive this through the neighborhoods. Still no water flowing. Well, it's definitely the driver's side that's smoking, so I'm gonna give her a one-two punch here. We're gonna let it eat on some marble mist oil, and then I'm gonna follow it up with some Berryman. And I'm gonna favor this side of the engine, see if we can Now I'll follow it up with Berryman. That's how you make them eat a little bit. Maybe she'll come out of her. Well, I think it's time we try the transmission. I'm gonna let it sit like this for a little bit, let the transmission get heated up. Definitely have reverse and drive, but this was a quick way to tell I have zero back brakes and about 4% of front brakes. I'm really thinking about changing the name of this whole channel to No Brakes Garage. Well, I pulled her out about six feet and then I'll be danged if the old front brake line didn't just explode on me. Of course, no one has anything near stock, so I bought these little short lines here, and I'm gonna up uh, some sort of ghetto replacement line. And it has now become extremely dangerous to drive because I'm sure all the brake lines are in that condition. So that is definitely not going to stop me from attempting to drive 500 miles. Also, I came up with the name for this car. I'm gonna call it Rocky because it fights me on just everything, nonstop. Well, that's not ideal or pretty. 
but is it gonna work? Yep. Well, here we go. First time this car has been out of this driveway in 40 years for what I'm told. Still trying to wrap my brain stem around this. This is just nuts. If all goes well, do a little shakedown drive, see what kind of issues we come up with. And then I gotta hit the road. I got 500 miles to go. Couple last minute things. We're hitting the road. Threw an air cleaner on it. Swapped the battery around. Rigged up some grounds. Got one headlight working over there. Uh, ran into some rust issues. No screws would hold, so that'll do for that. Master cylinder's leaking horribly bad. We'll just keep pouring oil on it. Added some zip ties to my fuel line. Uh, this stripped out, went ahead and fixed on that. So, this is it, I guess. Oh yeah, and I put some uh, Lucas in the transmission as well. All right, let's hit the road. I suppose my first fuel stop, I should check and see if there's a seat belt, because I know I'm getting pulled over. So far, fingers crossed, it's got a little bit of oil pressure and just enough temperatures. Well, I've got about 100 miles in. I am clearly poisoned. I have a severe headache. I can't see out of my right eye. but. I figured I better check the uh, lug nuts on here. And I left my breaker bar at the guy's house. I got this cheesy little guy here, but it's better than nothing. So I'm gonna torque these down. About 107 miles left. I'm gonna fill the oil and check the gas. I don't see anything leaking at all, actually. And it's running, knock on wood, fantastic. It's not heating up or anything. Glad I stopped when I did. Saying it burns oil, I think, is putting it lightly. is bone dry. So I'm gonna put a little snake oil in it and then some uh, diesel oil. That'll eat. Five hundred miles. We made it. This is crazy. Still running, driving. Probably too good for me, actually. Zero issues on the way here, other than burning oil. I am still always so impressed with Chevy. Sitting for uh, 40 years, 1979. Gave me a little trouble getting her going, but heard like a kitten the whole way here. Uh, pretty damn happy. I don't think it's got enough brake in it to power brake, but we're gonna find out. Well, thanks for watching. Heck of a trip. Make sure you hit that button down there.